got some people in this parking lot that say, I'm not survivor. I survived hell. I survived loss. I survived brokenness. I survived a divorce. I survived all kind of stuff. I'm a survivor. NCCF, what's going on? This is Kevon Terman. I am your host this evening. Uh, unfortunately, our bishop, Bishop Ray Taylor, is out of town. Uh, shout out to Bishop Ray Taylor and Pastor Donna, who uh, are the leaders of this house, New Covenant Christian Fellowship. And uh, this is Midweek Empowerment, and we are doing our NCCF podcast. We have a special guest for you today. That guest would be me. Um, as you all well know, I am not Bishop, and so I will do the best that I can. I am a member here, and I am in his stead, so I am um, really grateful for being here. We have a very, very special guest, one of Bishop's boys, and uh, without further ado, we are going to have Pastor Sean Ricks. How are you, What's guys? up? Hey, 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 man. You got to get hype. You know how Bishop do. He's a motivational speaker. He's an encourager. That Bishop make you want to, you know. A lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You the vein, sir. You the vein, sir. <laughs> you got him. You sound like a son. You sound oh, I, like I, a son. I, I got him. But she, it's the rising climax for me. You know. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. How's everything going today? Oh, I'm blessed, man. I, 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 I cannot complain. God is faithful, and He's still on the throne, sovereign. And so, you know, I, I just love Him, and and I'm good because of that. I'm good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, look, we're happy to have you today, man. And we are hype. Believe it or not, we hype. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, you Less have of an to accent, come, on, come, come on. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a Southern boy. I, I, um, I've been to Delaware for approximately 26 years, but I never lost my Virginia roots or my Virginia ties. If you see me, I'm always representing. You know where I come from. Very proud of my, my, uh, my home state. Proud of the people that came on my whole state. I beat my chest for AI because he's part of the you know seven cities. I, I beat my chest for Norfolk State University, my alma mater. Yes, uh, I beat my chest for for anybody in the seven five seven. The Mike Vicks, the the uh, 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 my goodness, it, come on, uh, nah, uh, 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 uh. Ronald Curry. Come okay. on, See, people okay. don't talk about him. Ronald Curry was a beast wide receiver with the Raiders, but he played a uh, quarterback. He was better than Allen Iverson as quarterback in high school. So, you know, that's where the, that's where the twain comes from. And it, guess what? It used to be worse. It was worse at the time. So it's pretty strong, Doc. But we're going we're going to get this off to a good start. Uh, we already had some offline conversations about your about your twain. Uh, but yeah, welcome to the platform. We really appreciate you, man. If you're just tuning in, this is NCCF um, Midweek Empowerment. First question that we have for you is tell us a little bit more about yourself and who you are and what you do for the people who don't know. Certainly. I am uh, Pastor Sean Ricks. I have the privilege and the honor of serving the people of the Glorious Church, uh, formerly known as Glorious Full Gospel Tabernacle Center. Uh, that church was birthed some 25 years ago. Uh, through the vision of uh, Chief Apostle Patricia C. Williams and Bishop Tyson Williams, God bless his soul. Um, 25 years ago, uh, there was a little church on 4 West 4th Street. Uh, it used to be a bookstore called Gloryland Books. And uh, the the uh, proprietor of that bookstore would open up the, the bookstore during the midday for prayer. And it was right beside a park where there was a lot of drug activity, a lot of uh, alcoholism, uh, prostitution. But she would open up that store for the, them to come in and she would feed them and pray with them and just love on them, man. They used to call her the pastor of the park. And eventually, as things transitioned, uh, it went from a bookstore to they would have bookstore in the daytime and then turn around and have church in the back of the bookstore. 
Nice. Uh, and and when purpose is in you, it, it has to be fulfilled. I don't care if it starts in a corner store. I don't care if it starts in a corner of a store. Uh, eventually, God shined down on that bookstore and and God showed purpose to uh, Apostle Williams. And uh, she was Evangelist Williams at the time. And people started coming for prayer th from Dell Tech. They started coming from prayer. And she actually built her congregation at that time through that. Well, fortunately, I was lucky enough to uh, snag one of two daughters that she had. <laughs> uh, uh, Tawana was her daughter. And we met on a humble, on a real humble. If I tell you that story, if I get to it, I'll, I'll share it with you. But no, um, wait. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it's one of those, you know, got to play the love song music because it blew my mind. I know that it was of God uh, when we met, but we, I, we, Tawana and I ended up dating and getting married. And uh, I uh, dedicated my life back to Christ. I was raised in church in the South, went to church every Sunday. Got to college, did, you know, thought I was big and bad, grown and hung out, party, did what I wanted to do. Um, and then God's destiny put me here in Delaware because I didn't have any family here. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have a job here. I didn't, it wasn't like I was coming here to something. He literally ordered my steps. That's why I know that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And then the Bible says, though he falls seven times, because in my steps being ordered, I stumbled, I made mistakes. Right. I just did what I wanted to do, but he'll put you back on the path, uh, the plain path. And uh, we got married, dedicated my life back to Christ. I was playing the drums in the church, sitting back, chilling. And I heard uh, Bishop Ray last week, yeah, brag about how he was the baddest drummer in Wilmington. I ain't seen it. I need to see the tape. You got to run the tape. <laughs> hey, Mr. Plays the drums? Yeah, Bishop plays the drums. Bishop plays the drums? <laughs> Bishop Me. plays the drums. Play and, bra and bragged about it. Kayvon, he bragged about it with Pastor Sean Lee. Because Sean, you know, plays the organ and stuff. So, you know, I was playing drums at the church and, uh, um, you know, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me concerning ministry and concerning a call, you know, and, and that was the second time I had heard God's voice distinctly, you know, because people start, you know, they try to um, put words to how the voice of God sounds. What does it sound like? Is it, you know, is it majestic? Is, are, they, are they all these noise? Well, I think God is so awesome and he's so unlimited. He Talk can sound it. exactly like he needs to sound to you because, because there might be a voice uh, that's specific to you that will get your attention. So what I knew when he spoke to me, I knew that the voice was so clear. I heard the clarion call and he spoke to me concerning ministry, he spoke to me concerning teaching. And that day at the same time, he was speaking to my leader. We agreed in the spirit realm. Then I started teaching Bible study. I went through the, the de, uh, my training. I went through deacon. I went to seminary. I went to college. I let Fast forward, uh, some a few years later, we started helping to build the ministry, uh, serving as youth leaders, youth pastors, assistant pastors, and we had uh, went and started joint to another assignment, working that for about three or four years. And uh, Chief Apostle decided that she was it was time for her to uh, uh, retire, sit back. You know, she was in the ministry twenty five years. She was in the ministry forty years, but she was working this work twenty five years. And the good people of Glorious asked. Uh, myself and my wife to come back and to lead and, and to the, she passed the mantle to us. So that's who I am. That's where I am in the spirit realm. In the secular realm, man, I, I work for a Fortune 500 company uh, doing some uh, client service managing and, uh, you know, just, you know, doing doing what I can to show the glory of God in every arena. I love that. I love that. So we're going to get into ministry next, but uh, I want to I want to know a little more about you. Um, and I and I specifically want to tag on to something that you talked about in terms of when you heard the voice. Right. Mm -hmm. And 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 a lot of us, I would I would imagine, has heard the voice or think at least we, we've heard the voice. And I'm just wondering how long it took you to answer the call. I mean, I'm sure the phone was ringing. Uh, quite a minute, so, but how long has it taken you to, to answer that call? So one, one thing, um, before I heard the call, I was always a studious kind of guy. Like, you know, I, my, I, I come from a lineage of barbers. My, my grandfather was a barber. He had two barber shops. My best friend was a barber. So I spent a lot of time in a barber shop. And so for those who aren't familiar with the barber culture, I know most of us in our culture, uh, barbershop beauty salon, you know that in there, um, 
it's full of knowledge. The barbers are your your your, your pastors. The barbers are your your, your uh, accountants. Therapist. They, your, the therapists, your, your accountants, your your, your coach. Your, they know something about everything. They they do marital counseling in the barber shop. They you know they try to teach you how to be a player in the barber shop. You know, and being in that atmosphere, the one thing I learned is that you have to learn how to properly present your argument. If you're debating who's the greatest basketball player, right? You can't just come and say it's Michael Jordan without your facts to back it up because you might have a Kobe Bryant fan in there who, you know, tries to spit out the same thing. It just depends on what era. So I learned my debating skills in the barbershop all the time. God was using it. Uh, he was he was honing something into me for later. Right. So when I got the call, I was already studious. I knew that in order for me to uh, teach the word, to preach the gospel, I had to get into the word of God. I had to study to show that self-approved, like Timothy says, a workman who's not ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Because when you get up and stand before the people to teach or preach, and you're not rightly dividing the, tr the truth, you're going to lead somebody astray. That's so good. getting the call and understanding my personality, um, God just said, look, I'm going to use what I've already placed in you for my glory. So when, when he called me what, and, and I heard the clarion call, I said, okay, Lord, now what's the, what's the first thing? Because I'm not a preacher. I, I don't, I can't hold my ear and uh, tune up. You know, that's mm -hmm. not my forte. My forte is rightly dividing. Let's look at this word. Let's look at the revelation in this word. Let's make this word applicable to our lives. How can we walk this world up? Because many of us are feeling because we fell in love with the personality, but we didn't fall in love with the God of the Bible. We fall in love with the personality. We fall in love with the personality of our pastor. He's got charisma. He he has got a good we fall in love with the personality of our ministry. Come on, they got a good choir. The praise and worship team is all that. They got a great band. We fall in love with the personality. Our our church personality is outreach, you know. But the true thing is your pastor should always point you to the word because everything else is going to fail. Everything else is going to fade away. Everything else, the grass withers. The flower faded, but the word of God stands forever. And so when you find yourself in trouble, because it's life, life mm -hmm. happens, right? Mm -hmm. And I can't get to my pastor, I can go to my word. Because my pastor's got a life. And my pastor's going to have some issues sometimes. Sometimes pastor's sick. Sometimes pastor is dealing with a family crisis. Sometimes yes, pastor's just tired. You know what I mean? And so uh, uh, I always, I say, Lord, if you give me this platform, help me point people to be better studiers. Help me point people to be hungry for your word. And that's what uh, I knew that, you know, when the Lord spoke to me, he said, look, you, you're going to be a teacher. And the funny part, man, uh, we, we, we're doing a ministry class right now. Um, there's a, a lit, litmus test where you answer 25 to 45 questions to see what your gift is in the fivefold ministry. You know, uh, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. And every test I took, no matter how many times I tried to switch the answer, it pointed me back to teacher. Wow. So I know, I know with evidence, I know with evidence that God has called me into the fivefold ministry to, to teach his word. It's a lot to unpack there. Um, a whole lot to unpack, but we, hopefully we can get to some of it. How has the landscape of ministry changed for you over the last year? A lot has happened. Of course, we've had COVID. We've had to pivot in light of a pandemic. Talk to us about how that has affected you and your church and your ministry. Yeah, um, we have gone. Uh, there have been times in the last 12 months where we've had to go totally digital. Right. So, you know, if you if the characteristic of my church, we're 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 Pentecostal. We got a Pentecostal flair, uh, apostolic oil. We got holiness. We, we just got a hodgepodge of 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 characteristics in there. And, and we, we, we teach relationship, not religion, because religion is a set of man-made rules that set you up to fail. Relationship says that even when you fall, I have a father that forgives us, right? That's what relationship. So we, we're teaching that, but we have a Pentecostal flair. We the loud crew, right? Mm -hmm. Hand clapping, foot stomping, tongue talking, devil chasing, sanctified church. That, that, that's who we, that's how we flow. And you feed off of the, the spirit and the energy of the people. And so we had to ch change that because um, we were no longer able to come together and glean off of one another. And, and, and so then once we set up a studio, uh, initially we set up an in-house studio. 
We were sitting there, me and my wife. My wife would sing, I, I'd preach, then she'd preach, I'd sing. You know, we were Paul and Silas in the in the uh in the den. Uh, we right. had converted everything, we had background, you know, and we were learning in the process because we had never had uh the ability to do this stuff before. We 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 you know, we're not uh a, a large size church. We 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 are thankful for the numbers God has us to pastor, but we we didn't have meg. We didn't have a media ministry. You know, sure, we didn't have sure. uh, a bunch of cameras and stuff. But it taught us uh, to to learn these things, to learn about the different platforms, to grab. So we grab a camera here. We grab an iPhone there. We grab a a, a media um, platform here, a light here, and God started sending ideas and people, you know, Pastor Bishop Ray and I talked a lot, like once a week when it first started, because we were encouraging one another, because the truth of the matter is no one had passed it in a pandemic before. So now, not to compare ourselves, but now every preacher, every pastor was on the same level playing field. We were doing the same thing that T.D. Jakes was doing. We were right. doing the same thing that Jamal Bryant was doing. You know, we had to figure out how to pastor people and love people and still preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in, in a place where I, I, when we went in, I told the people, we're going to be like Noah. We're going in the ark and we're mm -hmm. shutting up until God tells us to come out. But while Noah's in the ark, I still got to preach. I still got to tell people, you know, that God, Jesus saves. And so for the first few months, we were doing that from home. And then God struck a, a he says, you know, why, why are you doing this from home when I gave you uh, a platform because we had even transitioned from the building we were worshiping in, worshiping in, and uh, we just went hard for the Lord. We totally revamped our building. We painted, we put up monitors and all. God just, we went hard for, for a month. And then we started letting people, you know, uh, a few at a time, just the, the ministers and whatnot come back in. But we're ready, man. We're ready. I, I know that, you know, we miss worshiping. Uh, this Sunday, we were able to worship. We had a joint uh, event outside uh, for to celebrate Resurrection Sunday, and the people came out. They were just so happy to be out, uh, which I, I believe I knew they would because you know after a while fatigue and 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 um, that nesting it gets to you. So, so are you all back full time, or are you still figuring that out? We we. My doors are open. Now I just got to tell the people our doors are open. <laughs> you know, that I, I, I believe, and I was talking to one of the pastors, that's going to be one of the hardest things. We got to pray together because folks are now, um, they, they're, they're really set in their ways where the, the ministry platform has to change. You really got to, you know, we used to go to church and stay in there four and five hours. People ain't, they're not built for that anymore. You know, okay. it, it, it only took a year for a whole culture shift to, to, to change, you know. So allow me, if if I may, can I can I push back a little bit? Talk to me about, um, are we paying attention to what's going on in, or what the pandemic taught us? Like, do you feel like, um, I'm not a pastor, right? I just, mm -hmm. I'm under Bishop, and I'm sure you all talk about this, these things and your pastor friends, so on and so forth. Your limited pastor friends, um, mm -hmm. that's an inside joke. Mm -hmm. um, so, are we paying attention to the pandemic? You know, is there is is there a right or wrong way to do church? Um, yeah. is, talk to me a little more about that. Just because here's the thing. Uh, yes, people are playing a little more of the bedside Baptist and people are doing a little more of the tuning in while they're multitasking. So, uh, sure, people have gotten comfortable with that. But hasn't your audience uh, expanded as a result? As a result, we have a, an audience. It, here's the wonderful part. The word of God is being preached more anywhere than at any time in history. Right. Let's go. So if I miss church on Sunday, I can do the recap. I can go right back to Facebook on Sunday night and play my whole service over again. Absolutely. Well, I, here was, here's the wonderful part. My brother is a bishop in Houston, Texas, my my, okay. my natural brother. And many days, you know, for, for a year, we we. We, I, I got a church here in Delaware. He has a church in Houston. We don't ever get to, for during the pandemic. I was there every Sunday. I was able every to sow to his ministry every Sunday. I was able to hear his word. And this is my little brother. So I, I'm always, I'm the big brother pumping him up. So I was so blessed for that. Or I could see Pastor Ray's service before, you know, I go into my church and just get some encouragement, some strength. That was the beautiful part of it. That That's the, the takeaway that yes, you again, now everybody was on even playing fields. So if you got a Facebook live feed, if you have a YouTube channel, you, you can get that ministry 
out website. to everybody. Website, you can get it out to everybody when you didn't have that ability. You could only handle your 25, 50, 250 people that, that were in the service that Sunday. Beautiful. Absolutely. But the thing we have to also learn from this is, is that, yeah, there's going to be some adjustments because, um, you know, you, you, you see the attention span. You see that a lot of stuff we did in church that was churchy wasn't always necessary. You know what I mean? It, it was it, it filled time, but did it feel people? Mm. And, and so, you know, then we got into the flow and, and I'm, I'm going to get some pushback because I expect it. But, but this is how it is. You know, we, we the, Jesus, I, I, I tell people the foundation of the church never changes, but culturally church has always changed. So let's go back to the 50s, the 60s, before the advancement in technology and microphones and, and, and amplified, you know. They weren't using microphones and stuff. And now if you don't have a microphone, a sound system, you're not effective. Right. You know, right. you, they, they, they didn't have, you know, uh, go back to when the church didn't allow drums in the church. But now if you don't have a good drum, a cold drum or a cold music department, you're not effective in certain certain, you know, um, pockets of, 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 of church culture. So. Uh, yeah, the dynamic change, the foundation is still the same. The word is still the word. I, I think of it like this, man. When Jesus died and, and it, you know, we just kept coming over resurrection season. When he died and the apostles scattered, they were literally hiding from place to place the whole service at the penalty of death. But the penalty of death didn't stop the church from flourishing. And that's what I'm saying. A pandemic won't stop the church from floor. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Jesus said, upon this rock, I built my church and I'm not going to give hell the glory. I'm not going to give sickness the glory. I'm not going to give opposition. I'm not going to give government the glory to come against my church. So, yeah, we have to change some things. Pastors do. There were some things we, you know, that w was not automatic that wasn't necessary. And, and this pandemic has shown us we can get in church and bless people and give an hour sermon and heal and pray and all that and still let them be done at the end of, and still have deliverance and still have the power, you know, instead of, you know, people just in church. Uh, Cause some folks know, you know, we old school, I, I'm we, we, the old churches. If you ain't in church, then you sin him. And that's, that's how it was. But now we, we learn. My thing is how can we exemplify being able to be, active in the world if you're keeping us in church all day <laughs> think yeah. about it you know i mean here's the thing man we can go on and on uh about this particular topic i think you know if we're paying attention to the pandemic and, and how we we were forced to pivot in light of the pandemic i think that you know we focus too much on the or as a society in general right and i think mm -hmm. this is more or less um more more or less about the and as opposed to the or so you can do you can stream a service and do the hybrid approach, right? You can stream a service and have uh, people here, <laughs> like sure. literally in the seats. You can do both, and that's what we've um, tried to do, and it's been effective. And I think, you know, if you're paying attention, uh, we've expanded our audience. Uh, I see the numbers. Um, I happen to serve under a bishop who is about those analytics. So after mm -hmm. the conversations we're having is like, how many, uh, where are they from, and all of that, and we're able to track a lot of that through the website, which is uh, which is awesome. So I appreciate your take on it. I, I was able to, you know, uh, again, VA all the way. I was able to minister to one of my friends uh, in Virginia, some 250 miles away, through uh, the loss of her grandparent through through this this, and I mean, effectively minister. You know, like she was joining. We had a, a fasting and praying. Uh, we had a time of consecration, 21 days of consecration where we prayed and fasted every morning. And she was on that prayer line and fasting every day and, and so and see. And I knew she was a she had a church home, you know, but if I didn't have this platform at that time, I couldn't have been as I couldn't have been effective to her. So it is certainly um, something wonderful. And here's the thing. When, when it's over, when we're able to come in, there might be some people that might not be in church, but now you don't have to ask where, where you've been. Cause you can say, did you check out the broadcast? You know, there's a word in there for you and people can, again, on their job, they can punch in. Let me see what new, what Bishop Taylor said this week. Let me see what was going on at glorious church this week. Hallelujah. Absolutely. And, 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 and they, and, and that's what makes it so effective is that Sunday's not just for church. Every day is for church now. Every day. Pastor Ricks, let me ask you a question, because um, I happen to have a lot of uh, people in my life who happen to be ministers or um, a lot of friends, believe it or not, who are who are 
um, who have answered the call. And for some reason, people think that preachers don't have struggles. People, preachers don't go through things. And um, I happen to know a little different. I want us, I want you to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that you've been challenged with since answering the call and being in ministry. Yeah, that this, <laughs> that's loaded. That, that's that's um, one of the things I've always asked the Lord. Uh, and and it, you know what? I didn't. Let me take it back. Let's, so let's. Uh, the Bible says, "Humble thyself before the hand of the Almighty God, that He may exalt you in due season." He says, "Humble yourself." And, and I'm only giving. I, I'm giving you scripture. We can talk plain, but I need to reference it back because the words gonna stand. It says, hum, humble yourself. The reason why that's so important is because the alternative is, Lord, humble me, right? The alternative is, Lord, humble me. Now, when God humbles you, let's think about the potency of God. He's omnipotent. He, he has unlimited power. So he can use anything, anybody and everything to humble you. Ask Job, right? Mm -hmm. So, so when he says humble yourself, it means always stay low enough that you you and transparent enough that you're not so heavenly minded that you know earthly good. Mm. I say all of that to say, as a minister, as a pastor, if you can't handle adversity, if you don't expect adversity, then you're in the long, wrong line of work, and because it comes to the the pastor first. How can I testify to someone that God is a healer if I've never witnessed this power of healing? How can I testify that God is a deliverer if there's never been anything that I needed to be delivered from? And so when when I got the call, you know, I, 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 the cliche we say is I look at my hands, my hands were new. I look at my feet, my feet were too. When I looked at my hands, I had five fingers before mm -hmm. I was saved. I got five fingers. I had the same feet. I got the same feet. The Talk. difference is now, what do I do with these hands and feet? Where do these feet take me? What do I do with these hands? The, the hands that wanted to be violent, the hands that wanted to do drugs, the hands that wanted to be a womanizer. What do I do with these hands now? I use them to bless people. So, um, but again, with life yeah. comes struggle. With life comes adversity. Man, we, we, we can't sell this uh, Disney type of gospel that everything's going to be all right. But 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 I do believe that we all have a happily af ever after. Uh, but you got to get through every story has. Listen, it has plot. The, every plot, it has to have an antagonist. It has to have its peaks and valleys. It's got to have yeah. action. It's got to have something that makes the hero fight. Every good story, every good story has to have a reason the hero is fighting. That's so, the Yes, sir. Let me let me let me interrupt you uh, just because a comment uh, came in and I'm not sure if you can read that on your end. It says makes me wonder why some pastors commit suicide. Uh, we won't take the we won't deviate too far away from the conversation. Um, we're going to try to keep the mood light. Um, but I do want to ask a very simple question. I want I would love for you to give me a simple answer. Um, if you can. But who's strong for the strong? You, you got to find somebody you can talk to. You have to. And, and that's been a stigma in the church for so long. Um, counseling and therapy has been a stigma in church. We didn't want we want to tell everything to Jesus. But mm -hmm. but Jesus even said in the word, confess your faults to one another. Right. It, you got to find somebody you can trust to confess it to. And, and, and that's one of the reasons back to, you know, your point that I am transparent, because if I fake it, if I fake it, then I the people that's watching me. I have no barometer. So I always point to Christ because if I miss the mark, you won't miss the mark. Right. Okay. If I mess up, you won't you won't miss the mark. All, all I all ever do is point to Christ. Don't don't worry about me. I'm I'm a man. I always talk about we. I talk about my faults. I talk about my flaws. I, my wife. One of the reasons why I have to live holy is because my wife is is not going to keep it from people. She's not. She, she she tells testimony. You ever want to know if a, if a pastor's living right? Look at his wife. I look at his wife. I heard that a, yeah. a million times, and, it, and it's the truth. Because it's been pastors who just beat their first lady in the head before they came to church, and then come and preach to church now. That ain't my wife. My wife gonna tell you. You know she. Some of the stuff I used to tell her. My God, I know God was blessing us, but Lord, you may. And, and, but that that healed us and that helped us. And so. Um, if a pastor, if a man of God, if a woman of God, if a saint, a believer doesn't have an outlet to share what's going on on the inside without judgment, 
because that's the, the key thing. We don't want to tell our leaders because we're afraid of judgment. But all have sinned and come short so of the glory, the glory of, God. of God. So if you can't trust a, a spiritual leader, get you a therapist. Get you get a, a therapist. therapist. Hey, listen, I'm going to have to interrupt. Um, and I believe that scripture was in Romans, if I'm not, uh, if I'm, if I'm, if I remember my word. But we're going to go to a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. I want to continue on this path about um, just the struggle and how the struggle is real when you're in ministry, not just for pastors, but for, you know, all of us, right? Yeah, I want to talk yeah. more about it. Well, I got some people in this parking lot that say, I'm a survivor. I survived hell. I survived loss. I survived brokenness. I survived a divorce. I survived all kind of stuff. I am a survivor. Welcome to NCCF, New Covenant Christian Fellowship. I'm Kavon Terman. I am in uh, stead for, <laughs> I see you. I'm in stead for Bishop Ray Taylor. Uh, we are a church that moves from religion to relationship. Uh, we have a special guest today, Pastor Sean Ricks of the Glorious Church. So give him a, a, a huge virtual round of applause. We are back. We were talking about um, just the struggle. And we were talking about the struggle, and I and I, I think one of our evangelists said, "Without judgment," which is, yeah. um, you know, it's it's it, we say it, and, and, and I hear you, but I think that we have a lot of work to to, to do still um, in terms sure. of judgment. You know, I, I've we, been in situations where, um, you know, people of the church like to, you know, you mentioned it earlier. If you miss a Sunday or two, the first thing they they say is, "Where you been?" And I don't think people understand uh, what that does to a person who is just uh, really struggling to try to uh, try trying to be consistent. You were yeah. saying something? Yeah, it, I mean, it's it's we are very critical people because we, we we get the word the word tells us that we can judge sin, right? But then it tells us don't be careful with that. The position I put you in, sure. um, because when Christ judges us, He judges us with the heart of love, right? It's so much so that he became the penalty for sin. So he says, I, I love the analogy that when the Bible says that he is the propitiation of our sin, uh, he, 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 he becomes our counselor at, at the court table. We, 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 we're at the table being accused. The, the term Satan means accuser, slanderer of the brethren, meaning that he is a prosecutor. He's, he's accusing us. And we have a defense counselor who knows what we're dealing with, but yet. When it gets so bad, our defense counselor says, okay, they did what they did. What's the penalty for that? And when the sentence is pronounced, the defense counselor stands up and pulls you out of the defendant role and takes the penalty for you. You, you, you ain't got no lawyers that's going to do a bid for you. I don't care how good they are. You, you don't have that. And that's what, the, that's what Jesus is. He is our counselor, but that's he good. also takes our punishment. And so if he doesn't judge, why do we have the right to judge people? And we judge people who are believers harder than we judge the world. So we, we can't fall. We, we can't have faults. Though a righteous man falls seven times, that all, it's almost guaranteed, you know, that there'll be some shortcomings. But it, it's the ones that are holier than thou. They have a struggle, you know, that this judging. Um, and, and we talk about we, we talked about that, man. My, my children came to me. And me and my wife, and they were telling us that as they were older, they 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 have therapists. And first we sat around, we scratched our head, we was like, were we bad parents? Right. But there's some things that you can only discuss with certain people, right? Uh, I'll give another analogy, then I'm gonna let you go on with my kids when they come home, they can't they don't stay long. Like they'll come visit for a weekend, a couple of weekends. The reason why they don't stay long is because oh. they know they're our children. Right. Mm -hmm. And immediately they fall back. No matter how old they are, they fall in line with the rules of the house. 
Yep. And, and, and that's honor to your parents, number Absolutely. one, but it's also understanding they're adults now. So if you don't want to follow the rules of this house, go back to your own place. So we have to learn not to be offended when our children grow up and, and learn how to love them where they are and accept them for who they are. So when they were like, we got therapists, we were like, did we mess y'all up? They were like, no, mm -hmm. no y'all were great parents. There were just some things that we couldn't tell y'all because you guys were pastors and preachers. And, you know, we came from a church, uh, a family that loved the Lord. And, you know, we believe in forgiveness, but they were dealing with some issues that they were not ready to come and talk to mom and dad about doesn't make me a bad mom or dad that just means that good i'm glad you found an outlet that you trust sure. that's not going to judge you and if you feel better coming out of it then good because if you come to me we're going to pray about it you know we're going to talk about it we're going to pray about it wow that's um that's good <laughs> that's good um you know it's funny i uh, it's i think ministry um takes on so many different forms and uh i think it's important for your your congregation to all be tapped in um, just because, you know, it's it, I can't imagine being in your seat where everyone is coming to you. Right. Big or small. Everyone is coming to you. It's funny. I just got a um, a Facebook message from uh, uh, someone I went to college with and they said uh, it's something around the lines of, um, you know, the, the son is having some issues because uh, they feel abandoned. Uh, because when the dad left the mom, he in turn felt, you know, the son feels sure. like he left him. And it, and, it, and I, I think about the heaviness of of what's going on. But I also think about being approachable and being, you know, uh, being a soldier, uh, you know, under the tutelage of some of you great uh, preachers, man, and, and pastors and being being available because there's so there's so much hurt. There's so much need in the church amongst people. And I think the judgment piece uh, will keep a lot of folks away. Um, it, a lot of folks away. It, it will, man. It's the thing that um, people have a second thought on Sunday mornings before walking in that door. You know what I mean? And, and you, you know, we, we, we must be holy because we, we serve a holy God, uh, but we also are fallible men. You know, there's no good thing that dwells in this flesh. So if you, you keep the mentality that, you know, they're but for by the grace of God, go I, I, I'm just here by God's grace and, and I am a product of his forgiveness. I'm a product of his love. If you can accept that and embrace that, then you can share it with someone else. You know, you can share it. And um, I was a bad, you know, I was a bad, my father, for you, when I was a child, my father was a teenage father. He couldn't handle it, you know, did what he did. But God is so, his, his love is so redemptive and restorative that, you know, I went and found my father and talked to him and, and you know, and, and I forgave him before I even got there because, you know, I this is the kind of, I, I'm, I'm the kind of guy, I got gratitude, man. If nothing else, my father gave me life. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. So when, when, when I when I shared that with him, that he owes me nothing, he, he gave me life, that he owes me nothing. Man, our relationship, we talk every two days. It might not be about nothing, but every two days, God has restored that. Okay. And it was years that the canker worms and the locusts had, had taken from me, you know, and and but, but without strings, I love him because he's my dad without strings. And and I pray for that young man who, who feels abandoned by his father, that it be an avenue that he'll be able to get back with his father, you know, and not have hurt and bitterness, man, because, you know, forgiveness is a powerful tool in, in restoration. It's a it's a powerful tool if you let somebody go who's wrong you and you know they've wronged you. That's a powerful thing, man. And, yeah. and, and it's powerful. Um, it's it's <laughs> it's it's so powerful that, um, you know, as you're talking, I, I can't help but think, where were you in your journey? Right. Where were you in your journey when you finally understood that, OK, this is much bigger than me. And uh, my dad gave me life if he didn't give me anything else, because that's perspective. And but it takes, you know, one could argue that it takes a whole lot of work that you had to do within yourself. To, to, to get there, because I know there are people that are listening that um, are struggling with forgiveness. Sure. Tap, yeah. tap that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, and, and, and to be transparent, when I was a teenager, I was angry, you know, yep. because he made some promises to me and, and he embarrassed me by making these promises and then not coming through. Because, you know, your dad tell you something, you're going to grab my dad coming. Da, 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 yep. And it doesn't happen. Three o'clock. 
Exactly. It doesn't happen. Now I'm angry because number one, you didn't have to tell me because then I would, my expectation would be there. But yep. now you said expectation and your disappointment. So uh, uh, some years went by, you know, uh, I, I didn't, we, we, fell out of communication. It wasn't because of bitterness. It was just, I'm up here doing my life. He's down there doing his life. You know, he fine, I'm fine. But there was a pulling on me, right? I, I was like, you know, it's people out here that don't know their fathers. Yep. And you or know your dad. They don't have any. And, and you know your dad. So so I started praying, you know. I was a I was a, 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 a elder then. I started praying. And one day, one of my friends from high school called me and goes, You'll never believe who I'm standing here with. And I was like, who? And and this guy was a this is a Caucasian a Caucasian guy, you mm -hmm. know. So I'm like, well, Eric, you calling me who who what? He's like, this guy tells me that he's your dad. I wow. told him I went to high school with you. He said he's your dad. And it was he was in a men's shelter at the time. Wow. I said, You're kidding me. I said, put him on the phone. I spoke to him. It was like talking in a mirror. Cause he his voice sounds just like my voice. We laughed the same thing. And same accent. that was on third same accent. Thursday night, that Sunday, I was down in Virginia at the shelter. Wow. Uh, and, and doing all the, all the, look, dad, I love you. Yep. You know, you got to get better. And my father got sober. My father got a job. My father got his own place. My father got his own car. And we just talk now, you know, just, just encouraging one another. He, you know, I'm still ministering him salvation, talking to him about the Lord, you know, uh, but the, res the restoring power of forgiveness allows him to be free around me because now you know he he doesn't have to come around me with shame and what he didn't do all he can do is be my dad just be my dad now just be my dad don't you can't go back and fix what you, what's happened in the past let's go forward let's move forward now you know this is a whole nother segment so uh i, I don't want I, i'll get my hand smacked if i stay on this but i do want to take a little liberty here um answer answer me this one question does it ever go away, that desire um, for your father? I don't think so. Uh, I think that the way God created us, you know, we, we he, he created us that two people were required to produce one of its kind, right? And so the when you take those elements, those characteristics, like you got people, let, let's say for instance, you you won't don't know your father, but somebody in the neighborhood knew your father. Mm -hmm. They go, you you know what? You walk just like so and so. You Billy, you walk just like Big Billy. Yeah, you laugh just like Big Billy, and you don't have any recognition Context. of none, none whatsoever. So that produces a longing in you, and and you see somebody who has their father in their life, and you see their friends. That produces a long. The same thing with mother. It it it, it produces that, and so I don't think we ever desire uh we ever don't desire it but here's the here's the here's the good part we have a heavenly father that takes all of those attributes and we can get it all we can get validation from him we can get protection from him we can get provision from him we can get support from him he becomes the father how much more uh is does your heavenly father uh able to provide and supp uh, supply than your earthly father that's what that's why when we feel the void when we have a void like that, we have a God who will fill that void. That's awesome. Where are you, where are you all located? We're on, in the heart of Wilmington off a of church in 7th Street, 720 Church Street, right across from Benny's Big Scoops. Not Benny's anymore. That was our neighbor. But we're right on the east side, baby. That's it. 720 North Church Street. Yeah. Yeah. So we, awesome. we uh, you know, awesome. we, 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 we believe. Uh, we came from the east side. We're on the east side. We're working the east side. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So uh, what are some of the things that you do to take care of your mental, uh, your emotional, your physical and or spiritual? Mentally, I allow myself to be human. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I laugh at jokes. That's funny. Sometimes they're not as tasteful, but it's funny. Exactly. <laughs> I'm a huge sports fan. You know, that's why I tell the church, oh, we got church at 1030. I guarantee you we're going to be out by one because I got to talk trash and see the game. You know, you if, if, if the Lord said, yeah, I mean, we're on opposite sides, two whole teams. So I talk smack down, you know, um, emotionally, you know, I, I have my wife to share with my life with. I have a great family support system. Um, I try to give uh, support as much as I receive. Um, I don't. 
balance is my key thing. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the Lord, we, we are a, a uh, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He made us man, body, mind, and spirit, right? Mm -hmm. That's what he, that's the three components of man. And I try not to get too high or too low in any area. So physically, I go to the gym, I work out, I run. Um, you know, I want to keep this temple in order, you know, so that I can live the best life as long as God is, uh, allows me to live. Um, I, I really believe that there's a balance that man must have because anything, if, if you notice anything, if you have more of one of any of those three dichotomies, it's an unbalanced man. You you don't take care of your physical, but you're very spiritual. You're very emotional. You know, then you're going to get sick and die early. You don't take care of your emotions, but you're very physical and you're very spiritual. You, you're a midget mentally. You know, you, you can't handle it. Now. Exactly. <laughs> you don't take care of your spirit, man, but you're strong in your body and you got your emotions in check. Then you are wrecked for life. You know, you don't have any kind of a, a moral compass to guide you. So you can be a good looking buff man who has sweet words, but you don't have a, a moral compass. So eventually that, that what's in you, that demon in you is going to come out. So uh, some things I go to the gym, man, I work out. I, like I said, I, I take a mind break, take vacations, uh, you know, which, which pastor shout out to you, Bishop Ray, do your thing, man. You know, yes, I, I, well I, deserved. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, God has given me a, a life mate that put, keeps me grounded and in check. She keeps me grounded, but she also keeps me dreaming. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Man. And then I got legacy, man. I got children and grandchildren that I'm trying to show them um, that you can be saved and be cool. You can be saved and still have friends. You know, I, I, I go to the barbershop right now. I'll fit right in. I'll, I'll argue my points. You know, I'll jones on somebody. If you come mm -hmm. in, bro, I'm going to break on you. <laughs> I'm going to break on you, but you know, that's part of my, my, who I am, my personality. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's the way that God made me. And I'm glad he made me this way. So I want to uh, talk a little bit more about, um, you're asking the people in the chat are asking what church you go to. So I think your people got you. Yeah. They, um, they, they, they hook they me up, hook you. me up, sister Nikki. I see you. <laughs> um, I want to talk about your friends. I want to take a little bit about uh, to talk about that. I think we talked offline uh, about friends. And I, I often, I used to have this, uh, this thought that most pastors could only be friends with pastors. I think about the, uh, the heavy lift. I think about all that you have on your shoulders, um, how burdensome that, that, that could be, uh, the things that you have to kind of hold close to the chest. And I, and I look around and I say, who are your friends other than other pastors? Talk to us about that. For those of us who may not uh, be close enough to another pastor to, to 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 realize like what that friend group could look like. Sure. And, and it's true. I have friends who are pastors, of course, because uh, friends are people who can relate on a level. Right. So I have friends who are pastors who uh, we can talk about church. We can talk about leadership. Uh, issues. We can talk about the next planning period. Um, we can talk about what worked for your ministry. And that's fine. Uh, you know, that that's few and far because those type of uh, friends, you know, um, it's, 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 you, you, you don't have any uh, subjective to it. It's all objective because we're talking about a thing that we share in common, Absolutely. but, but we go back to that word trust. I need some people around me that I've known since I was knee high to a June bug who knows Sean BC, you know, mm. before Christ and, and who can see the change. So for example, I told you, I got a friend who's a barber, been my best friend. It, we've been friends so long. I don't remember the day we decided that we were going to be friends. It, he lived two houses, guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He lived two houses down. We've always been friends. I, 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 I tell him when I say cradle to the grave, that's us. He is, he was raised in church, but he's not a Christian by, you know, by very educated, an intellect um, will call me on my stuff. We sit down and talk and chop it up. But I knew that I was saved when he started respecting my views, a opponent to arguing about it. He, you know, he, I, did, I performed his wedding, right? I performed his wedding and being he, he, you know, all he had all kinds of ideologies and, you know, and uh, one of the his wedding coordinator came to me and said, you know, well, they don't really um, 
uh, talk about Christ, you know, they, they they had all these things written down. And I looked at him. He said, oh, it's going to be some Jesus at this wedding if he's doing it. I like you that. know, and, 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 and I embrace that because, yes, you know, we're supposed to be a light in a dark place. How can we be light if all we do is hang around light? Mm. Jesus did not, his, his disciples were not bishops, apostles, and pastors. Teach it. His disciples were the common folks, tax collectors who people couldn't stand, sailors, cussing Peter, sailor. That, that's who Jesus hung around, and he didn't change his character to be around them. They changed their character to hang with him. So how, you know, how, how, why would we all be pre preachers? We ain't going to do nothing, but when a bunch of preachers hang around, we don't do nothing but exchange sermons. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I want to know something. What's going on in the world? How can what's what's happening out there in the streets? Tell me, man, what, what's going on? So I, and please don't think all of my friends are, you know, uh, are, are worldly. But I have friends who they go to church on Sunday. They might go to the club on Saturday night. Now, not no more because we old now. I'll be telling what what, what are you we doing when the world's in the club? Yeah. what's Come on. Drink at home like grown folks, <laughs> you know. What I mean? But but the but you know I I don't I, I don't limit myself because you'll miss the blessing and what people are God is sending into your life. Some people He's sending into your life for you to help them to heal them. Some people He's sending into your life to put a mirror up to you so you can see where you know you still got some maturing to do. You still got some growing up to do. And you know that's a beautiful thing when your friends who who you grew up with who might not believe what you believe can show you you and you say, I still got to grow up in this area. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not as mature in this area as I thought I was. I'm, Ooh, take, it I'm not strong. take it a step further. It, it's, it's, it's important for them to be able to be able to tell you, but for you to receive it is even more important. L listen, man, uh, <laughs> I, um, I have friends that I, in college, uh, we, we, we talk almost every day. And so, you know, he, the, the guy is a pretty snazzy dresser. He's a, he's a, he's a very w good dresser. So we, we're, we're planning to go to one of our friends wedding in the summertime. And, and we were talking about getting our clothes together for, and I sent him a picture of something that I ordered. Right. And I knew in my mind, Oh, this is it's hot. This, this, this is going to get him. He got the picture. He said, when they drop that off at your house, don't let them leave it in your yard. He says, tell them, put it back on the truck. <laughs> it was and that bad. It, it, to, to him, it was that bad, right? Oh, so no. at first, I took offense. You know, I'm like, who, who do you think you are? You know? right, right, right. But I taught Bible study that night, and I talked about accountability. You need somebody that you're accountable to. I got off the Bible study, hung up the phone, I mean, hung up the service and called him immediately and was rolling on the phone and telling him how much I appreciate him for his honesty. But you because want to laugh here, about it. You can laugh about it because he meant he loved me enough to tell me, you think it's sweet, but it ain't sweet. Man, right? Man, I love that. I love that. See, see, now I know how Bishop feels when you can go in so many different directions. Uh, you're going to be with us for the next couple of weeks, though. Yeah, and I'm I'm, I'm blessed, man. I, I I love Bishop because he's one of those authentic. He's not. He, he's a preacher, but he ain't from preacher cloth. You know what I mean? He's just people, and that's what I love about him. Me and him have knitted the moment I met him, because I prayed for God to release me from from the preacher cloth people, because wow. the preacher cloth are the judgy, the robes and all. That's that's fine, but I, I want some that. folks that I can. I want to go to the game, man, and still be saved and talk trash to the people, the opponents down there, but talk trash in a way that we're not fighting. We just we just jostling each other. And me and Bishop can do that. We can kick it, man. There's a couple of cats, uh, Pastor Shannon McNeil, Bishop yeah. John Jeremy, yeah. man. We talk, man. You know, I, I love pastors who who still got that swag with them. Yeah. And, and hasn't lost the anointing. Oh, that's Bishop. still know how to flow with it. Yeah, that's Bishop all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's I, my I, I guy. I, yes, that's yes. Yeah. And you here's the thing. You know, it. it's funny. Um, uh, I love being under this tutelage, and and I I sent him a message one day, and I said, um, Bishop, to be honest with you, um, I I run things at work. I run things, at, you know, with my nonprofit and the whole nine. But I love being under your tutelage. I respect you just that much. Like I want to work um hard right but um but it's all like he, he's constantly you know it. it's all god right it, and and and, and, and I, I just i just love it but here's the thing and he, and he has swag he's he's okay i mean he's 
He's he's yeah. not, he's not he, mean, he, but he, he, he okay. No, let's not let's not gas him up too much. He okay. He okay. He got he got his woman. Okay. She can, she can do that. Pastor oh, Donna can do that. Is amazing. He's amazing. <laughs> he's amazing. Listen, um, you said a lot tonight, man, and I think um, I love what you touched on in terms of character. And, and I I uh, a brother once told me never let your gift take you to a place where your character can't keep you. And I and I, I never forgot that because I feel like that character, man. We we're not talking about character um, enough. And how important that is. One thing I wish we had time to talk about, man, is um, I have the privilege of helping um, with, with Pastor Ronell run the men's ministry. And we did a session on covenant friendships. And we we, we deconstructed the, uh, the relationship of Jonathan and David and really, really unpacked it, right? Because there's so many layers to it. And so I really want to know more about, I want to know your thoughts on covenant friendships and how important that is. And I'm going to say covenant friendships in general, because it goes both ways it, for, for females as well as males. But I don't think people really realize the importance of having that accountability and that friendship. I hear you talk about Bishop and I feel the love. Yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. the love. It, it, it's that kind of relationship where I don't have to call him every day to, to know that he has my back. You That's know what I mean? And, and I think me being from a different place where I had to learn and get friends in Delaware. Um, it helped me with that perspective. Like, don't let me get on the phone and call three people from Virginia because it's just over. But yep. I, 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 we have that kind of relationship. When you talk about covenant, first, we, we have to understand that the two parties both agree that there's going to be mutual benefits and mutual sacrifices, wow. right? That, that's that's covenant. And, 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 and to, to unpack that, to agree to that says that I'm thinking about the needs of someone else more than I think about my own. That's when you get into covenant. That's what Jonathan did with David. Look, I already know you're going to be king. So Let's try out my shield, try out my clothes, because you need to be dressed for where you're going. And prepared. And it, and, and, and it doesn't diminish me at all to hype you up. That's what real, that's, that's the truth. And I know exactly where you're hiding. When you're in the wilderness, I know how to find you. Shh. That Come that's on. that that's being bishop. It doesn't diminish glorious at all for me to hype up new covenant. That's good. It doesn't diminish new covenant at all for him to hype up glorious because we are confident in the God that called us. We're confident in our calling. So there's no jealousy. There's no petty. I, when he wins, I win because we're brothers. You know what I mean? When when he when 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 New Covenant is doing something, what can I do to help it? What can I do to enhance it? Y'all in Newcastle, we ain't in competition. There's only a certain number of people that God has assigned to Bishop's hand. There's a certain number of people that God has assigned. I, and when we get satisfied in that calling, when we really accept it, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of competition, the spirit of I can be better than you. I got this better than you. That will crumble in our church. And then everybody can go to any church on Sunday and receive the same word. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. But until we all come into the acknowledgement of the faith, that's why we have these divisions, man. And 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 typically it's from I, it's from men that's not me. <laughs> no, I, that's another con you know, because confident men, we ain't got time. Look, I, I got, got no I, time. I got a, I ain't got no time, man. I ain't got no time. But I like that what you said about character, man. Your, your, yeah. the gift, your gifts, listen to your gifts are for the people. Yep. But in the end, when you take that gift out, the character is who you live with. When the lights go off and the computer's out and you've hung up the coat from the job, your character is who you have to live with. That, that that's, who, that's who I am besides being a husband. I got to live with Sean. I got to look in the mirror and, and deal with Sean. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. This is, um, this has been amazing. And what I'm going to say is I don't get the treat to come back and, uh, continue this conversation, but Bishop will Man. be back. Uh, I want to say on the next two, two conversations, but I will be behind the scenes cause you know what I do. Um, I really appreciated this. This was a good uh, conversation. I, I, I appreciated our, our pre-work too. So, yeah. um, this just a little, the small amounts of time. That, any questions for me? No, I, I, I'm, I, I don't have any questions, but I have a blessing for you, man. You continue to serve and, 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 and assist and be the leader that you are. And there's great things in store for you. I'm sure your pastor tells you all the time, you know, everybody needs somebody like you 
I, and I, I'm grateful that God has sending them. You know, I got some brothers that, that, that are on my side. I got some women, you know, shout out to everybody who tuned in tonight. You know, yeah, I, I yeah, love yeah. you. I love you, Glorious. I love you, New Covenant. I love everybody who who, are, who is praying for me. I love my enemies. That's when you get to a new level of maturity. You know, Absolutely. those who are praying for your downfall. I love you. I love you because what God has blessed you can't tear up. So I just encourage you, man. I encourage you to continue to grow and, and sow. And I'm looking forward to working with you. You might not come back next week, but I, Bishop is all in you. you, you you've been, oh, you've yeah, been yeah. under him enough. You've been under him enough. So I feel yes. like I'm talking to him. I, I, I'll talk a little more That's grimy to him. <laughs> I, 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 I'll talk a little grimy. He told me to take it light on you because, you know, I appreciate I'll be it. grimy. With I appreciate you. <laughs> it because I'm not Bishop. So I appreciate it. <laughs> Listen, folks, uh, please, please, please. If you see at the bottom of your screen, uh, if you need to pour into our ministry at any point uh, or support Project 5000, uh, where we're trying to feed. Bishop got a vision where we're going to feed 5000. Our cash app is NCCF17. Uh, um, or you can text GIVE to 302-202-6703. Today, we had the pleasure of talking to Pastor Sean Ricks, man. Cool, cool, cool pastor uh, who happens to have a little swag and a little bit of an accent as well. So um, okay. thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and without further ado, we're going to get out of here. Take care, God bless you. God bless you. I got some people in this parking lot that say I'm a survivor. I survived hell. I survived loss. I survived brokenness. I survived a divorce. I survived all kind of stuff. I'm a survivor. 